Okay, so this is an exam question um, from the acids and bases part of the specification, and it allows us to cover um, a few things from that, from the specification itself. Um, and the first part is fairly straightforward. Um, so we've got four marks to get us going. Um, things to think about as we're reading it. So the question is about different pH values. So the whole question is about different pH values. Um, so any information, not that there's very much here, but any information you get at the beginning which is not part of the first or does not feature in the first part of the question, uh, this could be or is relevant uh, to any part, any of the questions that follow in, in question, any of the parts of question nine that follow. So uh, anyway, let's start with 9.1. Um, we're told we've got pure water. So the first thing to sort of remember or think about when we're talking about pure water is that we know from our topic uh, that a small proportion of it dissociates um, into H plus ions and OH minus ions. Um, and, you know, thinking about molar ratios, uh, you know, think about equations that the, uh, the number of moles of H plus ions is going to be the same as the number of moles of OH minus ions in pure water. So a student thought the water was acidic. Um, they're presumably basing that on the fact that they have a pH below 7. So uh, lower down in the school, uh, you know, whenever you did acids and bases, pH 7 meant it was neutral. And now one of the things that you've learnt um, during, the court, during this year 13 topic is that actually that isn't strictly true. Except it is because uh, that value of 7 was true is the true value of uh, of um, of neutrality when the temperature when we're under standard conditions? Uh, so standard conditions: two hundred ninety-eight Kelvin uh, atmospheric pressure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this example here isn't under standard conditions because it's at forty degrees Celsius. Um, so if you think about uh, this uh, dissociation, um, the forward reaction is going to be endothermic because you're breaking a bond. So if you increase the temperature, uh, the position of equilibrium shifts in the endothermic direction. So the position of equilibrium will shift to the right if we go from 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin to 40 degrees Celsius. So we will increase uh, the sort of number of moles of H plus ions. And given we're talking about in a fixed volume, we will increase the concentration of H plus ions and remember, pH is a measure of the concentration of, P of H plus ions, which is why the pH decreases or becomes lower than 7. Anyway, the student thought the water was acidic. Explain why the student was incorrect. So they're telling us that they're incorrect, so we're not even having to make that judgment. What we have to be able to do is to explain, uh, explain our answer, and our answer comes uh, from the fact that Whatever proportion of H plus ions we've got, we also get the same proportion of H minus ions. And now at A level, the definition of neutrality is when the concentration of H plus ions equals the concentration of OH minus ions. It just so happens that under standard conditions, that would give us a pH of 7. So our explanation uh, is, is, is because the concentration of H plus ions equals the concentration of OH minus ions. That is the definition of neutrality. Definition of acidity is that we have H plus ions greater than OH minus ions concentration wise. And uh, the definition of, of something being alkaline is when the concentration of OH minus ions is greater than the concentration of H plus ions. However, here we're being asked to explain why they're incorrect about saying it's acidic. That's because we actually still have a neutral solution because our concentration of H plus ions is the same as the concentration of OH minus ions. Please, 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 please be careful and make sure that you are being clear that it is concentration. Do not put H plus equals OH minus. Put concentration of H plus equals the concentration of OH minus. Right, so that's our first mark. We've got three more marks. It asks us to determine the value of Kw at this temperature. So we're given a pH. Uh, if we've got the pH, we can work out the concentration of H plus ions uh, because that equals 10 to the minus pH. That's one of the things you're going to need to remember. Uh, so that equals 10 to the minus 6.67. Uh, we put that into our calculator and we get uh, 2.138 times 10 to the minus 6.67. 
times 10 to the minus 7. So we've got our concentration of H plus ions. So we're being asked to work out Kw. So what's our expression for Kw? It is H plus, concentration of H plus, sorry, times the concentration of OH minus. Now, one of the things that we've already established in our explanation is that the concentration of H plus ions equals the concentration of OH minus ions. So that means that Kw equals H plus squared. So what we've done is we've substituted uh, that into there, right? And then we get H plus squared. So now to work out Kw, it's simply a square root of the concentration of H plus ions, which we've already worked out is 2.138 times 10 to the minus 7. Oops, I've got the minus there. Uh, so 10 to the minus 7, we do that calculation and we get 4.58 times 10 to the minus 14. So as questions, as acid-base questions go in a, in a final exam, this is relatively straightforward. It really should be something that you should be aiming to get four marks from. Okay, now we're up to a titration curve. So I sorry, I have to zoom out quite a way for you to see this. Uh, so sodium hydroxide solution was added gradually from a burette um, to 25 centimeters cubed of 0 0.080 moles per decimeter cubed propanoic acid at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, the pH was measured and recorded at regular intervals. So this would be um, required practical nine uh, if that's what we were um, doing. Um, so that's one whole page giving us that information. So our question related to this is use figure four to determine the Ka value or the value for Ka of propanoic acid at 25 degrees Celsius. So that is a little bit tricky. Now, if you're given a titration curve, and one of the things to sort of note about this, and sorry to be jumping around backwards and forwards, but they have given us very... Um, What's the word? Like precise graph paper. I mean, we can absolutely work out, we can use this as a graph, right? We can use this to work out values at certain points. Uh, it's not just a sketch, it's something that is has in fact, in effect, been plotted. Um, and so one of the things that's that you that you've it's got to sort of start sort of jumping to mind is that at half neutralization, and this is something that a lot of students get forget. Uh, because it sort of crops up only once in a blue moon, but it does seem to crop up quite a lot now in exam questions. So at half neutralization, uh, pH equals pKa. Okay. Now, just to be clear about what half neutralization means, it means when half of the acid has been neutralized. So if I knew uh, I had to add 30 centimeters cubed of a base to neutralize an acid, then to half neutralize it, I would add half that volume, I would add 15 centimeters cubed. So that principle is what we're going to use um, here. So I need to go back to the graph and I need to think about uh, what volume um, is going to be added um, at half neutralization. Now, when I look at that, I can't simply just read off a value for half neutralization. What I need to make sure I do first is work out um, how much was needed to neutralize it. I need to use the graph to do that, and then I can half the volume. So I'm going to work uh, by, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. So you know, again, sorry about this if it's a little bit confusing, but I think that's the equivalence point. Okay. So about halfway up the vertical line, or halfway up the vertical line, but sometimes it's not so clear. Uh, this is actually a tricky vertical one because they've actually got this on a slight slope. But anyway, halfway up the vertical line, that's the equivalence point. So I'll write that. Um, and that is when you have mixed the acid and base uh, in exactly the right proportions according to the reaction equation. So the acid and base are mixed. So obviously they will react, but they are mixed 
in perfect propor proportions. And by per perfect proportions, I mean according to the reaction equation. So that is that is when uh, half neutralization is going to be when um, half the amount of base has been added um, that would get us to the equivalence of points. So I'm going to just scroll up a little bit, and then I'm just probably going to have to fiddle with this a little, a little. But I'm going to draw a straight. In fact, I'm going to change that to a thinner line. I'm going to draw a straight line down. So I'll just get the thing the iPad to sort of make this work for me. I'm just going to have to move it so that I get it lined up with that equivalence point. So obviously you'd be using a ruler and a pencil or something. And that is the volume required for neutralization. So I make that, uh, and hopefully you agree with me, but I read that as 19.6. So 19.6 centimeters cubed of NaOH uh, was needed to neutralize. propanoic acid okay so I'll just zoom out a little bit there that means half of that half of that value was needed to um, get to half neutralization so half of 19.6 is um, 9.8 so 9.8 so I will adjust this but I'm going to do my draw my line up Okay, so that's my 9.8, and then uh, I'm going to read off uh, that point on, oh, sorry, totally cocked that up, haven't I? That's not 9.8, is it? Move that. That's 9.8, apologies. Uh, so that's 9.8. Uh, so that's half neutralization. So now I can read uh, what the pH was at that point. So again, I'm sorry, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to rub the top of that out. Um, well, that doesn't make any sense. So just Okay, and then I'm going to read that along. Okay, so I can see that the pH uh, is 4.9. Okay. Okay, so the pH is 4.9 at half neutralization. So that's really now what I'm going to use uh, to answer this question. So I will just spell it out. Um, so uh, uh, the volume of NaOH needed to neutralize uh, the propanoic acid That equaled 19.6. Uh, That's what I read off centimeters cubed. So therefore, the volume needed for half neutralization uh, was half of that, so 9.8 centimeters cubed. At half neutralization, I was able to read off uh, the pH. The pH equaled 4.9. Uh, we know that pKa equals pH at half neutralization, so that means the pKa equaled 4.9. So that means or that the Ka equals 10 to the minus 
So just like you do, uh, you convert pH into H plus ions by doing 10 to the minus pH, turn pKa into Ka by doing 10 to the minus pKa. And then we put that into our calculator and we get 1.26 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so I, I hope that made sense. I mean, the key, key thing, if you didn't, if you didn't realize this, that was going to make the question impossible. But the key to this was recognizing that half neutralization at half neutralization you've got pH equals pKa. The other thing was that you have a very sort of detailed or well plotted graph, so you can read values off it if you know which values to read off. So that was really what that question was testing. Now we've got uh, suggest which indicator is the most appropriate for um, the reaction in 9.2. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to draw. Uh, so we've got methyl orange, and they're saying uh, 3.1 uh, to 3 to 4.4. So I'm going to draw a, a band around there. So 3.1 to 4.4. So I'm just going to draw orange band there. Uh, Bromomethyl blue, 6.0 to 7.6. So 6.0 to 7.6, I'm going to draw a band about here. Um, so this is where the colors are changing. Um, Chrysophalene, so what should I do? I'll give it that, that color, I guess. It says 8.2 to 9.8. So 8.2 to 9.8, so I'll do it about here. And then the last one is carmine. Uh, so I think that's the color. 11.6 uh, to 3.0. Sorry, I forgot to do that. So 11.6 to 3.13.0. 11 11.6, 13.0, about halfway again between. I'll do that. And so for an indicator to be suitable, it has to change color in the vertical range. Okay, um, so very clearly, uh, it's this one here, uh, which is the chrysophalene. So that would be our answer. Do you know, so in an exam, one thing I would do, maybe think, or what I would do is, obviously you're not gonna have, like, you haven't got time to get your highlighters out and everything, but what you could do is you could write the names at approximately where they change color. Okay, and then you can see where are those names are they in the, are any of those names in the vertical part? There should be one that's much more obvious than any of the others. Okay. Now, I th I'm, I think I'm safe in saying that every uh, set of e exams has featured a buffers question. And when they do, they are almost certainly six marks. They may be five, but they're nearly always six marks. Um, there are different ways of making buffers. And I, I think students get a little bit thrown, but you have to sort of think about what it exactly is you're doing. And the way I would start any buffers question is I would just make sure I had uh, the number of moles of all of the different ingredients in the question. So uh, if we look at this, it says a student uh, prepared a buffer solution by adding 0 0.0136 moles of a salt Kx. So they've actually already given us the moles there. Then they've added it to a solution of weak acid. Uh, and that weak acid, 100 centimeters cubed, and then a concentration. Now, if you get a volume and a concentration, you absolutely should uh, use that. And then lastly, uh, the student then added, after that mixture has been created, uh, a specific number of moles of hydroxide. So just to be careful, we actually have the moles, and we actually have the moles. So we have the moles of the salt and the potassium hydroxide. What we don't have is the moles of the weak acid. So even though I might be repeating myself, I mean, I might be repeating information, sorry, not myself. I'm going to write the moles of each of them. So the moles of um, salt, uh, that equals one point, and I'm going to do it in standard form just because I prefer that. So I'm just changing the numbers into standard form. Uh, moles of HA. So this is a calculation. Uh, so we're going to get, uh, we're going to turn the volume into decimeters cubed. 
multiply it by uh, the concentration. Um, so that gives us our um, moles of HA. And then the moles of OH minus, which they've already given us, given to us. But again, it's just laying it all out so it's all ready to use. Now, if we think about it, so they prepared a buffer solution by adding the first two together, right? That was our original buffer solution. They have then added the hydroxide ions to the buffer solution. So the hydroxide ions are going to react with the weak acid. So the way to approach this uh, is to write a reaction equation. So we're going to have weak acid reacting with OH minus ions. When they do, sorry, the weak acid is, uh, sorry, I've muddled up my letters. I should be consistent. They told us it was X. Sorry about that. Okay, so my weak acid is going to react with my, with the hydroxide. It's going to make more of the salt and water. So the way uh, to approach this is to say, well, before the reaction takes place, when I've got everything ready for, you know, to add. So I've got the buffer solution. The buffer solution contains um, 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2 of the weak acid. This is moles. Uh, and I already have some salt. So I already have 1.36 times 10 to the minus 2. Uh, I'm not really interested in the water. I'm leaving it there for the sake of writing the equation correctly. And at this point, I have in a separate container, whatever that is, I have my moles of hydroxide. So when I add the hydroxide, a reaction is going to take place. All of the hydroxide is going to get used up because you can see that compared to the weak acid, the weak acid is massively in excess. So all of the hydroxide ions get used. Um, when the hydroxide ions react with the weak acid, they're forming a salt. So we can see that the ratio, the molar ratios are one to one to one. So when all of that gets used up, I'm going to be making that much extra salt. Um, so I'm going to add 3.0 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to add that to 1.36 times 10 to the minus 2. So I get 1.39 times 10 to the minus 2. Uh, that is also going to be how much of the weak acid is used up or reacts. So I'm going to be left with 4.97 times 10 to the minus 2. And so now I have my moles after uh, the reaction has taken place. So now I'm going to use the Ka expression. So one of the things that we know is if we just start with Ka from scratch, we know that it equals the sort of dissociated part of the weak acid over the original. And I can rearrange that so that I have my H plus ions because I'm ultimately trying to work out the pH. So I've rearranged it. On that again, haven't I? Well, this thing about HA clearly. Sorry, let's be consistent. Let's come out. Sorry about that. Now I can start um, inserting um, numbers. Now they gave me a volume of 100 centimeters cubed, but let's just uh, let me just show you something. So I start to put the numbers in. So I've got Ka, and that is 1.41 times 10 to the minus. Five, and then I'm multiplying that by the concentration of um, Hx, and that is moles per decimeter cubed. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the moles, and then for the moment, and I'll show you why in a second, I'm going to say over volume, because the volume we know is 100 centimeters cubed. Then I do that for the salt also, and the salt, the number of moles was 1.39 times 10 to the minus 2 over uh, the volume. 
Now you can see that obviously the moles of salt and weak acid are in the same volume, so what we can do is we can actually cancel that out. So just to say, uh, just, you've got to be careful. Um, if you know though you've got moles of both the weak acid and the salt and then you're doing a Ka expression, then you can just stick with the moles because the volumes will cancel out. That gives me a, a concentration of H plus ions of 5.04 times 10 to the minus 5. And then, uh, of course, the pH equals minus log of that. which works out to be 4.30. Always, 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 always make sure that any pH you write is to two decimal places. Okay, so if you work it out to be exactly 7, you write 7.00. And so that is our buffers answer. Um, hopefully that made sense, but uh, let me know... Um, all of those answers and sorry throughout the whole video but let me know if you've got any questions